Okay, so now that we got introduced to the basic uh, things or to the basic options that we will have to use frequently with uh, in, with uh, Rhino, uh, those include the zoom, the pan, the rotate, and starting, exiting, and repeating commands, we can now begin by drawing. Before we begin drawing, uh, there are two information, pieces of information, and a tip that I need to um, uh, give to you. Uh, first of all, Rhino has some sort of funny names or funny definitions to uh, lines. According to Rhino, lines are perceived and treated as curves as well. So whenever we refer to curves, we will be referring to the actual geometrical curves that we know and to lines. Um, uh, the next piece of advice that I would like to note before we begin drawing is that it's natural for people to think that if we're going to work with boxes, I would immediately go to the box icon or to the sphere icon if I'm working with spheres and start drawing uh, using the boxes or the uh, parameters that were given to me using Rhino. However, this limits the ability to um, be able to uh, work with the 3D elements. So all of these 3D objects are really nice and they're really helpful. However, we, in our case, we don't recommend starting our work with them because there's very limited editing that we can do later on. So always start from 2D and then build your way up to 3D. So we always start with curves and always remember that the simpler the curve is, the easier it is to start um, working with and to edit in the future. So always aim towards having uh, curves with as little control points as possible. Um, we're going to begin looking at the icons we have in front of us. The most uh, used icons that I personally use whenever I work with Rhino are these um, shapes when we start drawing, these probably eight shapes that we use when we start drawing. So there's the line. And notice how if I keep my cursor on the line long enough, I will have this menu stating that if I right click, I'm going to get a line segment. I'm going to be choosing a line segment. And if I left click, then I'll be drawing a polyline. Now, the difference between a polyline and a line segment is that a polyline is a set of lines joined together in one line, while segments are separate lines only meeting at one point. So for instance, if I right click now, I should be choosing um, uh, lines, separate lines or segments, because my ortho is on, as you can see at the bottom here, my angles are restricted to uh, horizontal and vertical angles. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this um, shape. And you can see that once I select this object or this line, I am selecting separate lines. So I'm gonna draw the same, pretty much the same object using uh, polylines. So you can see that right here, I have this polyline and you can see that if I draw this more or less same, same uh, object, you can see that if I select it, I'll be selecting the whole object and not single lines. Now I can always explode and join these lines and we'll get to that as we uh, continue working with these commands. Before we begin, I would like to also note that you should not be using the default layer with Rhino. Please uh, make your best to um, go ahead and choose your layers appropriately. So right now you can see that layer 01 is the active layer because I have this tick on it. If I wanted to activate another layer, so for instance, 02, I'm gonna double click right here and you can see that the tick has moved to layer 02. And this is why whenever I draw my lines, they will take the color of layer two, which is a purple color. And so if I start drawing, you can see that my lines turned purple while before they were red. Uh, I can always double click on the text of the layer to rename it. So say I'm gonna call this lines. I can call the other one a box or whatever. I can always change the color by pressing on the color icon next to the lines. I can always start new layers right here. If I'm as much as I want, I can always start sub layers. So this is a sub layer of layer six. And then I can always delete that. And we'll get that um, in more details later. I can always turn a layer on and off and I can always lock it. And of course I have multiple options that I can edit uh, using my layers. So let's go back to uh, our commands on the left-hand side. As we mentioned, the right click uh, will give me a different option than the left click. There are some commands that have a little arrow at the bottom, which is the cascades. And then it gives you more options of how to draw um, or more sub options of drawing uh, using that command. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and move to the curve. Uh, the curve, we have two major kinds of curves, and those are the Bezier curve and the B spine. Um, we're going to draw both of them, and we're going to begin with the Bezier uh, curve. And as you can see, I'm just going to turn my ortho off. And as you can see, my curve is not passing through the points that I am defining. It just has its own algorithm, and it will be working with my lines so that they produce the smoothest curves possible. And you can see that my lines don't necessarily pass through the points that I'm assigning. However, if I long press here, and I choose the second option, which is the interpolate points, which is a kind of base point, I, you can see that my curve is passing through the points that I am assigning. And since we're not working with uh, dimensions or specific uh, lines or specific dimensions, um, please go ahead and start exploring your options and know what is the most comfortable one for you. Personally, I like the B spine more, which is the curve that passes through my control points because simply I know where I'm pressing and it makes it easier for me to imagine how that curve is going to be um, looking like once I close it. Um, of course, I can again press on the circle. I can choose a circle from center to radius or from diameter, to, uh, define the diameter and so on. I can always again keep an eye on the command line to know what is uh, required from you. So it says, what is the radius? I can always change the radius to something that I define. So if I start typing 50, and you can see that this circle is now a circle that has a 50 millimeter diameter. How did I know the millimeter? Simply by looking at the bottom, this document is using millimeters as its units. Um, you can go ahead and start playing around with all the different options that you have, drawing rectangles, drawing curves, and so on. Um, moving forward to the next group, which we have right here, we're just going to skip towards the fillet surface, where you can fillet a surface, which is um, you have an, uh, a circular angle, as you can see in the image. You can also draw a box, which we don't really recommend. We're going to move forward to join. So as we have said, if I am right clicking on the line segment and I have um, multiple lines in the same shape as I have here, and oh, sorry, and then I wanted to join them together, all I have to do is simply go ahead and press on this icon that has um, the puzzle-like shape, press on it, and it says select the object for join. And now I can select my objects in sequence to join them. So you can see that now, once I'm done, it will automatically close the shape because I'm done joining uh, or I'm done selecting the objects. And now all my objects are um, as one line joined together. I can always, again, explode them by pressing on this explode button right here. And it says select the objects to explode. And this is the object that I would like to explode. Once I'm done, I'm going to hit enter or I'm going to right click to exit the command. And my lines are exploded into separate lines again. There's also the trim command that I can use to trim. And uh, for instance, I wanted to trim this part. So I'm going to press on trim and it says select the cutting object. So what is the boundary that you want to use as a boundary for the selection? I'm going to select this circle. And then it, once I'm done, I'm going to hit enter. And now it says uh, press uh, uh, select the object to trim. So I want to trim this object. So you can see now that I have trimmed this line with the boundaries of the circle that I have chosen before. Once I'm done, I'm just going to right click and I have my objects trimmed as I wanted them to be. Um, again, there's uh, the split where I can start splitting my lines to so say I want to split this line or this shape into separate lines. So I'm going to hit the split and it says select the object to split. And I can select this object. Once I'm done, I'm going to right click and it says select the cutting objects. So which object do you want to be cutting? Uh, you want to be to serve or you want um, to serve as the cutting edge. So because I selected this object, now the cutting edge was at this point and at this point, which are the intersection points. And now I have my circle divided into two different curves. So this is one curve and the second one is this curve. Um, there is one more interesting command that uh, you can um, look at, which says uh, show the control points. So for instance, I have this line and I want to show the control points because I want to edit them. I want to change the curve. And therefore, I can press on this uh, command that says show object control points. And it says select the objects for control point display. This is the object that I want the control points to, to show. I can, of course, select multiple objects. Once I'm done, I'm going to right click. Notice how now the control points 
appear and I can simply press on each control point separately and move it around until I am happy with how my object looks like. So you can see that I can easily edit my object. Once I'm done, this is one of the commands where I had to hit the escape button twice to exit. So I'm gonna hit it twice, there's one, there's two, and now the control points have disappeared. Um, there's also the move command right over here that I can use and it says select the objects to move. So I can select this object. And then it says, once I'm done, I'm gonna right click. And then it says point, uh, point to move from. So I can say, I want to drag it from this point and move it to this point. And you can see that my curve is now moved away. Uh, there's also the copy command. As we mentioned, there is a keyboard shortcut for that that you can use that I find much easier, which is Control C, Control V to paste. So for instance, I want to copy this, I'm gonna hit Control C and you can see that it's copied. And then once I hit Control V, it's pasted, but the two copies are pasted on top of each other. And to be able to tell what objects are on top of each other, all I have to do is to go there and make a selection. Since I have this menu, added or this menu appears, that means I have two curves on top of each other and it's asking me which curve do you want to select. So I can select any of these and then move it from this point to that point. You can see that my curves are now duplicated and I can easily move them. There's also the 2D and 3D rotate where I can select my object and then right click once I'm done selecting. And then where is my center of location? That could be here. And then it says, define the angle. So I want this point to be moved up at a certain angle. So that makes things much easier. Um, of course, there's the scale. There is also different options. There's an array option and so on that you can go ahead and start exploring. Please feel, feel free to do that. Now, before we end this tutorial, I'm just gonna delete all of these items and I'm gonna go over what if I wanted a precise length of my line. So say I'm drawing a polyline. I'm drawing a polyline and it says the starting point of the polyline. So if I want this segment to be a horizontal segment of 200 millimeters, so all I have to do now, because my ortho is not turned on, I can temporarily turn it on by pressing the shift command. And then I can now start typing 200 units and let me turn the ortho on and now I can start typing 200 and you can look at my command line and you see there's 200 typed in. Once I hit enter, a point comes in, but it's still not drawn. So it just tells me where the 200 point is. So I can now press here and then move up again, 500 units, not 5,000, 500 units. And then you can see one more time that this point is not drawn. So once I move my cursor, it will disappear. I have to press here so that that point is there and the line is drawn at that point. 200 one more time and press here. And then of course, close it at this point. And now I have a rectangle that is 200 by 500 millimeters precisely. This is similar to anything else that I want. So if this is the center of the circle and I would like to choose the diameter. So I'm gonna go ahead Right now, it's looking at the radius. I need to choose the diameter. So I'm going to look at the command line and choose diameter by pressing on it. And then now it's waiting for me to specify the diameter. So I can say, I want the diameter to be 500 units. And then I hit enter. Now the circle is has a diameter of 500 units. This is similar to everything else that I would like to draw. The clue here is always keep an eye on the command line to make to know what it is that you're waiting for and always make sure that you are drawing on the correct layers <clears throat> so you don't get your document confusing and difficult to deal with in the future. Of course, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. In the next tutorial, we'll learn how to move forward with our projects and how to continue working with our projects in a larger um, or in a more advanced way.